what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench. And this week we're going to have a little bit of fun with expressions. Sorry for my voice. I think that cold has actually turned into that Benjamin Button disease. Because I think I'm going through puberty. Oh, let, let's get to it. That's okay though, because in the future I'll be a Nazi killing badass. Alright, so you know how I always say that you should watch a tutorial and then uh, figure out something in it and apply it to something else? Well, I was watching this tutorial by Jake Bartlett over at School of Motion. Well, he was using an expression that I really only knew existed in scripts, and it actually opened up a technique for something I wanted to do. So let me show you how to do that. I often want to use like concentric circles with a trim path or something like that that I can't really use radio waves for. But if you want them to be the same with the exact same width stroke, you have to either duplicate your shapes and put in a different number for every size parameter, or you have to like duplicate the layer and put some expression on them that'll actually increase the size of it based on the layer's index. But what's cool is that this expression actually lets us use the index of the paths themselves. So let me show you how this works. We're going to open this up, open up the group here. We got all these ellipses, and I'm actually going to delete all of those. All right, so we're going to open up this guy right here, and then we're going to open up this path. And don't worry about writing this whole thing down or anything, because I'm going to actually make this project available as a download. So let's look at this real quick. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many paths we have. So what the expression does here, it says this property, which is this right here, dot property group. And what the property group method does is it takes the integer that you put in here, and it looks up the tree that many times to another property. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go up four times. So we're in the size, the first one goes to ellipse, then ellipse again, and then there's group, that's only three. But there's an invisible contents in the group here. So if you were to look at this, it'd be contents, group contents, ellipse, ellipse path, size. So we go up four times and we put in num properties, and that gives us the number of properties in that group. So right now it would only be one. So the next one is this path. And that's going to get us the index of this path within the hierarchy. So we're looking here is this path dot property group. And this one's three. It goes up one, two, and then the contents. So this goes up to property group three. And that's different than the previous one. And that's because this group doesn't keep an index of these ellipses. But the contents does. So we basically want to get the index of this in relation to the contents that holds all of them. So that's why it's three and not four. So then it's just dot property index. So this property, property group three, going up to the invisible contents, and we're gonna get the property index. So then the next thing, we just have some sliders up over here. We have an outer and an inner. So the maximum is outer, and the minimum is inner. That's the diameter of the ring. So then we have a simple expression right here that says size equals, and then we're gonna use linear. Linear is basically a range mapper. But what we're gonna do is look at the variable, this path, so that's our property index. So this path number goes from one to the total number of paths. We're gonna go from the minimum size to the maximum size. And on this next line, instead of putting in an array of just size comma size, I was lazy and I typed one comma one times size, which is basically the same thing. So when you're done with that, you close this down. I'm gonna bring the slider down to like 1080 for a moment so you see what it looks like. Then we're gonna just duplicate this ellipse. So you can see the first one comes out here. So the minimum and the maximum, and then everyone in between is gonna have these distances. See? So now you can make this bigger, make this smaller, get bigger. If you go negative, they'll just disappear, which is interesting. So you can just play around with that. So you know me, I like to go further with it. And this is kind of an intermediate thing I came up with with trim paths, but this one's not animatable. So I kept going and I came into using it like this. This version has animatable parameters for the start and end of the trim pads in each one. It has a different offset so that if you're in the middle here, I can move this around. You can actually see It'll go more. You can crank this up crazy amounts if you want to, and it'll get a different look. Of course, I'll leave that in there for you guys to mess around with. And then you can take that and use it for like background transitions or modify it even more and make kind of a mat, which you can use with footage. Does your city have a pirate ship? Mm, I doubt it. All right, so the next one started to mess around with colors. We can still change the outer size, inner size, all that stuff on here. You can actually change the alpha. Luminance right here doesn't do anything. It was something I was messing around with. You can change the saturation on it and you can cycle through the colors. This one uses like hue saturation and lightness to mess with that. So I wanted to do one with RGB. And as you can see, this one actually lets you pick a color, a start and an end color, and a start and an end alpha. And I messed around with animating those colors. Because of the way this works, there's like pops between different colors here. But that's okay, I thought it was kinda cool. And then you also have a way in here using hue to cycle between them, so you can kinda control them yourself. Still pops a little bit though. 
So let me show you one more interesting thing about one of the earlier examples. If we get rid of all these ellipses out of the one that was animated, and we open up, uh, let's just say end in the trim path here. You can see it's pretty much basically the same as the other expressions, but we have this variable here that's the index of this path divided by the total number of paths. So since this can never be higher than the number of paths, it's gonna be a fraction less than one. So if we multiply that by 100, it means that if we had 10, and this was the first one, this would be one over 10 times 100 or 10. The next one would be 20, 30, 40, 50. So we take this value as the ratio variable and put it into the linear function so that the middle can be variable. That's why when this animates, it still goes zero to 100 for all of the lines. However, in the middle of that, we're using this ratio. So as the end here goes from zero to 50, we're gonna go from zero to the ratio. So every line starts at zero and it's the same, but as they go toward the ratio, they're different. So this kind of allows you to interpolate between an actual value of zero and the result of this expression, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna have to start playing around with that myself a little bit more than just this. And you can see on the other half of this expression, once we're over 50, as we go from 50 to 100, we're gonna go from that ratio back out to the value of 100. So they all come back together. But that's how when you duplicate this a whole bunch of times, you can actually have different values. As you see, they're all different lengths. So even if you put that offset back to zero, so they're all different. Let me bring this in a little bit, you can tell. So hopefully that explains it well enough for you to at least start messing around with it. So it's kind of a complicated topic, so I understand if there's any comments or questions, so just leave them below. I think in the future I'm gonna to try to do some more expression-based tutorials where it really explains the idea of what's going on. But for now you have this to work with and it can open up a lot of cool stuff. If you find anything pretty cool, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. All right guys, that is it. If you feel like helping to support Workbench, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you check out workbench.tv for more great content. I'm Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Gorlammy. Bye.